That's my family, Katie. It's not me. Oh, but it is him. And there it is, from young and handsome Al Pacino to a barely recognizable Diane Keaton, the key line of dialogue in Francis Coppola's masterpiece, The Godfather, now being reissued next week with a brand new print and sparkling soundtrack in honor of its 25th anniversary. It's the key line because Michael Corleone doesn't know the power of his own family. It's a big part of him, too. The big surprise for me, seeing The Godfather again, is just how great Al Pacino is in this picture. Marlon Brando, of course, gained the notoriety and the Oscar, but Pacino provides even more glue to hold the story together. Now, Johnny is my father's godson, and my father went to see this family. And he offered him $10,000 to let Johnny go. But the band leader said no. So the next day, my father went to see him, this time with Luca Brazzi. And within an hour, he signed a release for a certified check of $1,000. How do you do that? My father made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Later, he takes control from his wounded father and replaces the loyal consigliere Tom Hagen, his adopted brother played magnificently by Robert Duvall. You're not a wartime consigliere, Tom. Things may get rough with the move we're trying. Still later, in a great scene, Michael Corleone moves his family's interests from New York to Las Vegas, and he's foolishly put his irresponsible older brother Fredo, the late great John Cazale, in charge. But Fredo, the goof, greets Michael with hookers, and it's a big mistake. Who are the girls? That's for you to find out. Get rid of them, Fredo. Hey, Michael. Fredo, I'm here on business. I leave tomorrow, and I get rid of them. Of course, I can't leave out Marlon Brando. A great moment, his death scene, improvised by Brando himself. <laughs> the Godfather is glorious drama, high art and high entertainment, from Gordon Willis's magnificent interior camera work to the perfectly oily performance of the sleazy Mo Green by Alex Rocco to the unexpected trip to Sicily, where Michael hides out. They got the money to shoot that sequence. We never saw anything like that in a mob picture before. Mm -hmm. The Godfather is about how justice denied soon becomes justice subverted. That's how the film is opening with the Baker's appeal mm -hmm. to the Don. I could talk for hours about the film, but, you know, it's Roger's show, too. <laughs> you know it's excellent. It's worth another look on the big screen. No new footage, but a beautiful, pristine print available nationwide next Friday. You know, looking at the film again, and I agree, of course, with everything you've said, I realized how it works because, oddly enough, in this movie, The Godfather represents good. And The Godfather theme is sad because people didn't listen to The Godfather. If they'd only listened to Don Vito, we could have saved all this trouble and all these dead bodies. And the reason they get away with that, it's so brilliant in this story by Mario Puzo and Francis Ford Coppola, it's a sealed system. Right. There are no civilians. No. The only cop you meet is McCluskey. He's crooked. He's, he's in there. There are no victims. You don't see any victims of gambling and alcohol and prostitution and then later drugs. Right. And the only crime is disloyalty. Right. And so within the sealed moral world of this film, he's everything works and he's the good guy. This is the rare case of where a book, and it was a pop mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. book, has been transfigured by Coppola into something yeah. far greater than that. Well, let's now, it is pop culture, but I read The Godfather and I, I couldn't put it down. It's just but, a heck of a good but story. But you know that this is a greater movie than it is a book. Well, that goes without saying. When we well, come I back. I said it. Well, <laughs> then you said it. Okay, and I agree. When we come